What's up trigger pullers? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, thanks for checking things out. You didn't have to click on this video, but you did and that is awesome. So with that being said, fitandfire.com is up and running. That is my website to supplement everything that's going on with the channel. So if you guys are interested in the products that I talk about, uh, most of them will be over on my website and I've got a lot of great deals of the day and so on and so forth. So by all means, swing by, check out fitandfire.com. I'd appreciate it. It's a great way to support the channel. Okay, so let's get into it. This time I am finally talking about this right here. This is the six hour MPX. And uh, while this is not new to the market, I am just now getting the opportunity to get my hands on one and shoot one of these. Now, interesting thing to note about the MPX is that this is one of the models that was tested for the US Army's submachine gun trials that just happened here recently. And uh, if you don't already know, the BNT APC9K is who actually won. So the question is, did the Army get it wrong? We're going to try to dive into that in not only this video, but a couple other videos as well, and see if the BNT APC9K was actually the best option. So we're going to start with the MPX, and then we're going to start gradually working through some of the other models that I'm able to get my hands on here in the near future. So Let's just kind of dive right into this uh, model right here. This is the, again, the MPX with the 4.5 inch barrel. Um, I'm gonna talk about some things that I really like about the MPX. I'm gonna talk about some things that may be challenging for some individuals, some things that people may not necessarily like, some preference things. Overall, I don't think that there's really too many things going on with this that I could say, I didn't like. I really did like this Sig Sauer MPX. This thing is um, pretty solid. It's a pretty solid shooter. There's nothing really that stands out that would say, ah, oh, no, please don't, you know? But uh, we'll talk about a couple things that may be an issue for some people and go from there. All right, so what do we got? This is uh, basically a civilian version of the submachine gun that. Six Hour has produced. Uh, this has a brace on the back, a PDW style brace here, not a stock. So uh, that is pretty awesome. Thanks ATF for being ridiculous. And uh, this actually whole setup really makes it extremely comfortable to shoot, believe it or not. You would think with the PDW style stock uh, with this metal piece up against your cheek, it would be really uh, uncomfortable to shoot, but I will say this whole setup right now is extremely comfortable to shoot, especially for someone of my stature. And we'll get into that here in just a second. So the MPX is a short stroke push rod gas system, and that really helps with recoil mitigation and putting accurate shots down range. It also really helps with um, the reliability of this as well. It fires from a closed bolt position, which is um, not typical of submachine guns, uh, historically speaking, but uh, for the MPX, it really helps with reliability. So that's something I really like. I did mention that this is the 4.5 inch barrel and it comes with two of the SIG style magazines, uh, which are proprietary. So if you are running the MPX, you're going to have to have the SIG style magazines. Uh, no other magazines will work. The thing that I love about this setup as it stands right now with the exception of the ejection port is that everything is ambidextrous. So uh, the charging handle has ambidextrous controls, the selector switch here is ambidextrous, and then the bolt catch bolt release is uh, ambidextrous along with the magazine release on either side. Now, I will point out one thing with both of those controls here in just a second that may be an issue, uh, but by and large, that is super cool because if you are you know, kind of peeking around a corner, you find fire, 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 you want to switch up and peek around a corner again, but need to reload, then you can do that from your left-handed shooting position. Or if you're just left-handed shooting, a uh, left-handed shooter anyway, you're good to go, right? So those are some really awesome things about this. Now the accuracy, I, I didn't put rounds on target uh, at any distance, but what I can tell you is that I was extremely accurate up to like 70 yards. Uh, the range that I shoot at, tall grass shooting sports, uh, 
Huge shout out to Mike and Lisa for allowing me to shoot uh, there and film whenever I want. Good on you guys. Go check out Flint Hills Foster Teen Camps as well, another nonprofit organization that they run. Uh, that would be cool. Links are down in the description below, but I wanted to give a huge shout out to them. But um, the way that they have their range set up is just in front of the firing line, they have a gong that is about 70 yards. So from when I'm shooting in front of the firing line, you're sitting about 65 yards and I'm hitting that probably like 90% of the time. A lot of that has to do with the setup itself, but a lot of it also has to do with the red dot. I'm running the Romeo 4H on here, and it's a pretty good red dot. It has a bullet drop compensator integrated into the reticle itself, which is pretty nice, but I think that it's calibrated for 5.56, uh, which is fine too. Uh, the, the reticle itself is a crosshair, which is not my favorite, but it still does the job. And at 10 yards, uh, this thing was deadly accurate. As you can see right here, I just went to town on a man-sized target, shooting at the head of the target and just wore a hole right into it, uh, shooting fairly rapidly. And I get it, it's 10 yards, not that big of a deal, but with a 4.5 inch barrel, still, it's, you, you can really get good, accurate shots with the way that this is set up. And that's something that I really, really liked. Now, while I was shooting this uh, at the range uh, at Centerfire Shooting Sports uh, a few weeks ago, I was also able to shoot the CZ Scorpion, uh, which is kind of the cousin to this, uh, different brands model of this, I would say. And I will say that uh, I, I prefer the MPX. The ZZ Scorpion is pretty nice. It had a PDW style stock, or excuse me, a PDW style brace along with it as well. And I don't know, maybe it was just the setup, but it seemed like I was kind of sitting up a little higher than I was with the MPX. With the MPX, you've got a good cheek weld. You can put your cheek in the exact same position each and every single time. You know you're locked in and you know you're gonna get accurate shots. With the CZ Scorpion, I felt that I was kind of hovering up here and I was trying to figure out where I was trying to put my chin or cheek or whatever, and it just felt awkward to me. It may just be me, it could work for other people out there. I'm not sliding the CZ Scorpion. It's a decent uh, pistol caliber pistol as well, but I will say that that was something that I didn't particularly like. Now, in comparison to this, to the BNT APC9K, <laughs> that's a lot. Um, one of the things that I liked about the um, MPX in comparison to that when I saw it at um, in RAM was the fact that the ambidextrous controls on the magazine release and the bolt catch uh, are a lot closer, right? So that is a lot easier for someone to actuate on either side of the firearm. Whereas with the BNT, it is um, a little bit more spread out and it is not a push button rather than a catch like this where you have to either push up or push in and, and that's not something that I particularly like. So I do like this setup a little bit better than the B and T. All right, so again, overall, this thing has been a lot of fun to shoot. It's extremely accurate for two distances. I would probably say up to 100 yards, it's gonna be extremely accurate. And that is very telling for something that it has a 4.5 inch barrel uh, and a very compact design. And that's something that I really, really like. A person being five foot seven and about 180 pounds, I can really get in behind this and get this locked in and fire accurate rounds downrange each and every single time. So I really did like it. Now let's talk about some of the things that I'm not 100% sure about or maybe maybe a problem for some of you out there. Again, I'm five foot seven. I'm not a very big dude. I'd never pretend to be a very big dude, uh, but if you are taller than five foot seven, the MPX may be an issue for you, right? If you're six, foot, six foot two, um, maybe bulkier, this may just be way too small for you, even with the brace fully extended to try to get as much uh, standoff distance as possible. This may be a little too small for you. And that's number one. Number two is uh, the trigger on this is good. It's a good trigger, but I did find that I had a bit of a hiccup with it. And I don't know if it's operator error 
more than likely it is. Uh, so I'm not going to discount that one bit. But what I did find was that as I'm shooting it, I'm firing multiple rounds at once. I would fire, fire, and then it would like hesitate as if the trigger didn't reset. That may be, again, operator error. It may be a issue with this particular MPX. But what I think is going on is that while the recoil on this is very light and very manageable, I think what may be happening is in my head, I'm firing, firing, and as I'm going to fire the third time and it doesn't, it doesn't go bang, it's because the recoil impulse is telling my head that that little jerk is also the trigger resetting as well, and I'm not allowing myself to come off that trigger as well. So that may be something, or it just may be that the, the reset is a little bit more trickier than what I'm used to when it comes to like a mil-spec AR-15 style trigger. So that's just something I wanted to talk about briefly. Uh, again, it may not be an issue whatsoever. It may be operator, uh, but I just wanted to touch base on that as well. The final thing that I will touch on is the ambidextrous controls here with the bolt catch and magazine release. Um, one thing that I will say is as I'm dropping the magazine to reload, um, I have noticed that my finger will hit one of the two and I'm not sure which one I'm touching. So that may be a kind of disadvantage to the MPX in comparison to like the BNT APC 9K, but it may be something that you guys really like. On the back side, same here. You insert a magazine and you reach up to press the bolt release here, bolt catch, whatever you want to call it. You may inadvertently hit the magazine release and cause a malfunction. While the magazine may not come out, that will cause a failure to feed and you'll pull the trigger, it'll go click. Now, naturally, the normal remedial action for that is to slap, rack, and get back into it. But that is one of the things that I'm most concerned about when it comes to these ambidextrous controls being so close to each other. Again, I didn't have an issue with it. Other people may, I, I just thought I'd point that out. But at the end of the day, this was a lot of fun shooting. Um, I think about the only other thing to point out that uh, wasn't a problem for me, I never have a problem with it, but I do know that other people have mentioned it before, is the ambidextrous uh, safety select switch right here. Uh, for some people, that does rub up against their index finger and that bothers them. It doesn't bother me. I'm used to it at this point, so um, I, I don't even pay attention to it. But that really covers all of the highlights and some of the uh, cons that I see with the MPX. At the end of the day, I again really had a lot of fun with this little bad boy and uh, I wish I could keep it. Unfortunately, I've got to send it back. Uh, <laughs> this was loaned to the channel by Al, so I want to say a huge thanks to not only Al, but some of the other um, supporters out there, some of the other P Patreon supporters like Drew who have been donating uh, firearms to the channel for me to review. Uh, that has been really awesome. Um, the last thing that I will mention here real quick is that uh, this does come with these flip up sights from SIG. So uh, you don't have to worry about purchasing any type of flip up sights. These come with it. And then it has a tritium notch or a glow in the dark. I think it's glow in the dark notch on the front sight post, which is really super cool and glow in the dark uh, notches on either side of the rear sight post as well. So those are some really cool features. This, this whole thing is just feature laden and uh, again i hate to have to send it back but i've got to send it back tomorrow and um i'm gonna miss it to be frankly honest with you so um i, I think that this may be one of my next purchases to be honest with you uh, again i think the cz scorpion is another viable option but for me i just didn't like how it felt when i shot it uh it seemed like the recoil impulse was a little bit heavier than the mpx and uh yeah so I, I think that this was a very good viable challenger to the BNT APC 9K. And I, I, I'm not sure if the Army picked the right one. Uh, I do know that the BNT is supposed to accept 
SIG P320 magazines, but you have to use an adapter to do that. And according to what BNT said at NRAM, there's no plans to have that ready to go in the near future. So I don't really quite understand that. The Army picks up something that is going to be shooting 9mm and it's not immediately um, compatible with the M17. But go figure. Uh, neither was this. Who knows, right? So, <laughs> uh, again, at the end of the day, really did like this. Hate to see it go, but it is on its way back tomorrow. So, there you have it. That about covers it for this edition of Fit and Fire. I sure do appreciate you guys swinging by. Again, check out fitandfire.com. A huge thanks to all of my Patreon members. And as always, freedom through strength. We'll catch you later. Here comes high five. Ready to go? Bye. It's a piston operated system going on right here. So the MPX is a short stroke gas rod piston which really helps with the comfort comfortability? Short stroke accurate shots downrange. <laughs>